What is going on, y'all? My name is Bison, aka Bison Trades on Twitter. Make sure you go ahead and give me a follow and make sure you also subscribe to the channel. It really does help me grow this out as we continue to talk about Solana NFTs. But if you have been paying attention to my channel at all over the past few months, you would notice that I continue to rant and rave about the remnants, which is what we'll be talking about today. This video will just be a basic overview of what the remnants is, how to get started, and all of the new features that this most recent update came with. There's a ton to dig into, so let's go ahead and get into it right now. All right, so when you buy a remnant, which few little tidbits I would recommend when you are buying your remnant. One, search on the floor. Right now, nothing really matters as far as rarity goes, but down the road, we will have PvP. Weapons will matter, so if you're gonna snipe anything, I would say get a lightsaber, get a flaming sword or an ice sword, uh, a one of one if you're really feeling frisky. Uh, the other thing you can do too is once you get a little bit more accustomed to the game, see if it's something that you are interested in. See if you can snipe a zombie. Zombies do have a ton of utility. They do allow unlimited stamina, uh, which we'll get more into in a little bit once we move into a stamina system. They also allow unrestricted access to some of these zones that require an access item. So for government building, you need an ID card. Zombies don't need that. Uh, military base, need bolt cutters, zombies don't need that. And rad zone, radiation helmet, you guessed it, zombies don't need it. So they do come with a lot of benefits and now that we have durability on some of these items and we only have a certain amount of trips we can go on with these, these access items are going to become more and more important. Another little bonus tidbit is to look for a remnant with a backpack equipped on the NFT. This will allow for two additional slots on the remnant itself. So if we pull up an example real quick, as you can see, I have some of them looting. Uh, this girl right here does not have a backpack. As you can see, we're missing two slots over here compared to this guy. This guy has those two slots on the right. And while it may not seem like a lot, it could be the difference maker if you're deciding between two on the floor. With the introduction of resources as well, inventory space is definitely something that is welcomed. I love having a backpack now. I wish I had sniped more that had backpacks, but maybe you can make that adjustment yourself. Now, getting into the game, when you go into camp.theremnantsnft.com, uh, URL is subject to change maybe in the future at some point, but you are greeted by this pixelated Longwood Valley. Longwood Valley is the setting of our post-apocalyptic game where we go into a little bit of a survival game. All we are trying to do is see who can get the best items, who can get the most amount of camp, which is our in-game token, and resources, which were recently introduced in this big, massive update we just got. Effectively, we now have about 14 places to loot from. So we originally started out with residential, farm, and prison, then got military base, then got radiation zone, and now got government, as well as our two new resource runs, the mines, as well as the forest. When you add up all the resource runs on those six locations, as well as the resource run on mine and forest, we now have 14 places to choose from, which has been very overwhelming for a lot of our players, including myself. When I first looked at this, I was amazed by how much content was pushed out, but holy crap, there's a lot of options to choose from. We'll get to those in a second. If you're looking at the bottom left, this is going to be where you spend a majority of your time, making sure that your remnants are out on loot trips, seeing how long they have on their loot trips, as well as claiming any loot you have. So you can see over here, I'm gonna go ahead and pin this. If you're on desktop, I always recommend pinning it. If you're on mobile, that's kind of how they allow you to make the most of your space is whenever you click something. If I don't have this click, you'll see, and I wanna go here or I wanted to go to, let's say I have blacksmith open. You can see it closes out that tab. So it's really nice to have that pinned. I like it because if I'm going through and, and managing inventory or seeing who has what, it's just really nice to have that always up there and not tab down. So from here, I'm gonna go ahead and claim all of my runs. You can see most of these are resource runs right now. That is why I'm focusing on, just so I can start upgrading a ton of my stuff. And there's a lot of upgrades to get into. So from here, I'm just gonna go ahead and click over here. So it automatically goes back to the camp and you can kind of see how I go about sending them on a loot trip. You can see these that are not colored, they're grayed out, means I don't have the necessary access item in order to loot these places. So I can't get into forests, I can't get into government, can't get into military or mines or radiation. I don't really have any access items equipped. 
This brings us to our first point. If you're not going to the place at the current time of the current build, uh, make sure you are unequipping your access item. So if I equipped a bolt cutter and I just went to the farm, well, it's going to take a durability use off of the bolt cutters. I would imagine they do install some sort of quality of life change down the road to make sure that you know you can leave these equipped because we don't want you to spend a ton of time managing inventory and getting sort of a headache trying to manage all of these. Even with just a handful of rems, it does take up a good bit of time. So at 23, uh, I am finding myself managing inventory a ton, and I know that was never really the ultimate goal for remnants. So down the line, I'm sure there will be some sort of quality of life change, but until then, make sure you don't equip them if you're not going there. So from here, I'm going to go ahead and let's send this guy out on a loot trip. So I, this brings me to my second thing, is make sure you are divvying up your remnants if you have multiple on resource runs and looters, right? So resource runners are the ones who have more resource focused items. They're the ones who are going to be getting your resources so you can upgrade your items while the looters are going to go get your camp token and they're going to go get the items necessary to break down and start increasing your item level through the blacksmith. So this guy is a looter. You can see he does have some items equipped like the military compass, like the garden trolley or the garden cart and the miner's helmet. These are all resource related items, so it would make no sense for me to send them out on loot trips if he has resource items. These items give no bonus except for the infection rate on the helmet, so I don't really get a whole lot of benefit. This is why I say make sure that you are divvying up your resource runners and your looters. So from here, I'm going to send them out on farm resources. I like running farm a lot right now. Uh, it does give the most variety of resources and I just find myself needing to upgrade everything. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on farm resources, I'm going to click loot, and there you have it. In about four hours, this guy will come back with whatever resources, whatever he's gathered from the trip, and that's that. You can see over here in the looting tab how much time is spent over in these trips. So in radiation zone, it's about eight hours to go through. Uh, I have about two hours to claim, so I have set a little mental note to come back here and check in on my REMS around five o'clock my time, which is about two and a half hours to see what these guys have picked up. Over here we can claim, once they are done with their loot trip, I'm gonna go ahead and claim. They do have a nice little resend button, so if you're just wanting them to continuously run the same run, go ahead and hit resend. I do, I want them to have that happen, so I'm just going to go ahead, I'm just gonna keep hitting resend for a lot of these. This guy didn't come back with loot, Really unfortunate, I might floor them right here. Who knows? But I do need a lot of axes so I can get a lot of my resource runners into the forest. Forest is one of my favorite places to go right now because it does have a lot of items I need to upgrade survival guides, which I think are one of the best items still, even after the update, that you should be upgrading. So speaking of upgrading, let's talk a little bit about what an upgrade costs. Upgrades and power-ups and bonuses are very linear in this game. Uh, the last iteration of Remnants, they had a net positive, net gain effect, so it was just prioritizing which ones you wanted more. So, for instance, Military Compass uh, was a plus 9% benefit versus upgrading something like your binoculars, which was only a plus 2% benefit. This is all linear, so whatever you decide to do is going to be the same amount of net gain. Let's show you what I mean. So you can see level two binoculars right here, you get a plus 10% loot chance. Uh, the base level is plus 5% loot chance. If we go up to the next tier, it's plus 5%. So now we're at 15% and so on and so forth. Next iteration is 20% and it goes all the way up to 45% for tier nine. Eventually we will have 10 tiers, but for right now we only have nine. It's gonna take forever for anybody to get to tier nine, especially across multiple remnants. This effectively has added so much playing time, so much playability onto the game. It has extended the lifespan of the game tremendously. Up at the top row of this crafting table, you can see that we have our materials needed. So right here, we need scrap, we need leather, we need glass, and we need lenses. You can see we only need two lenses, but how you get lenses is by breaking down that item. So if we go over here to this tab, you can see we have a break table. And let's say I have some items I want to break down. Let's go through and see. Ah, uh, yes, so I do have a 
garden cart. I need to break this down because I don't need any more level ones. I already have my resource runners equipped. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead, go to this break table. I'm going to drag and drop the item into the break table. You will see it will cost 50 camp in order to get this. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break it. I'm gonna go to my mailbox, which is this top right little tab that has a little envelope. And then from here, I'm going to grab it, grab it, drag it, and put it in my inventory. And there you go. You now have a wheel. These are necessary in order to upgrade your trolleys, your garden carts, whatever you want to call them. With each tier of upgrade, you'll see we need more and more resources. So what was 210 in order to get to level two is now 420. The materials you need in order to upgrade are also linear. So whatever the base amount was in order to get to level two is what you add on to the next tier. So 210, 420, 630, and so on and so forth. All you do is you add it on to the next tier. All you do is add that increment onto the total from the last tier. As you can see, getting to tier nine is going to take a ton of time, a ton of scrap metal, a ton of leather, which I have calculated onto my own little Excel doc over here. So in this Excel spreadsheet, which I will go ahead and leave down in the description below, it's not very well put. I'm waiting for H's uh, ultimate guide, ultimate Bible to remnants, but you can see down here how much I've calculated to get to tier nine for whatever loadout I want. And that's just one loadout too. That's not across all 23 of my remnants. So it's going to take a ton of time. The ideal items I picked out personally speaking is compass, mining helmet, and trolley for resource runs. And then for looters, this is subject to change, but definitely walkie talkie, definitely survival guide. I think decreasing your trip time is one of the best things you could do, especially in preparation for when we switch to stamina. Right now we're on a key system. It takes one key per run in order to go on each trip with this update. It used to cost two to go into rug zone. Now it's only one. Thank you so much, gracious REM gods. Eventually we will switch to stamina though, which the devs have hinted is going to be 14 hours of loop time. So you really have to go ahead and prioritize how you want to spend those 14 hours during the day. So with decreased trip time, now we make the most of those hours. This is why I think it's one of the best bonuses to shoot for. I'm also bullish on income. So if you are going on the loot side, I think income is going to be a little bit better. Eventually you are going to maybe six months, maybe a year down the road, all of your realms are going to be fully decked out. It's going to be awesome. You won't really have anything to strive for unless they add more items. So that's why that last slot is up for debate for me. It's either rabbit's foot or money pouch. I haven't really decided yet what I want to shoot for. Probably go with both, but for right now, I'm going to focus on rabbit's foot because it does give me an income bonus. It does give me a loot increase. Now, in order to get one of each of these, so tier nine of a compass, a helmet, and a trolley, as well as a tier nine of a survival guide, a walkie talkie, and a rabbit's foot, I'm now calculated out how much I need for each of these. So I will need 14,400 animal fat, 11. 5,000 camo netting and so on and so forth. I've also calculated uh, the max trips or the min trips I would need for each of the most efficient zones. As you can see over to the left right here, I have the best zone to go ahead and get these materials from. So it would take a max amount of trips of 960 and that is if I am the most unlucky person ever and get the minimum each and every time. This also doesn't include item bonuses. So a uh, resource drop from the garden carts it is not included in these calculations. So as you continue to scale up, the less amount of trips you'll need. It'll be anywhere from 320 to 960 trips in order to get the animal fat I'll need for the max survival guide. This is something I'm heavily prioritizing because I think survival guides, again, are one of the best items you can get in the game. They increase your income, they decrease your trip time, they also increase your infection rate, but I will get into it a little bit on why I think infection rate is just kind of a, a nice little bonus to have, but nothing I'm really focusing on. Some of the things I need, like leather, are going to take anywhere from 456 trips to 1,368 trips. That is going to be a long time, so the playability of this game across the 23 remnants I have is substantial. It's going to be something that is going to be worked on every single day. So this begs the question, what am I focusing on right now? There are so many options, there's so many choices, and that's a good question. Right now, I am focusing a lot on getting resources in order to upgrade my stuff, uh, but I'm also focusing more on these longer trip times. You see, now that we're on a key system, I'm going to go ahead and take advantage of the key system as much as possible. 
to run those two government run trips per 24 hours. Whereas when we're on a stamina system, it's only 14 hours worth of trip times, which means you only get to go to government once and then some filler trips as well. By maximizing those government runs or military base or radiation zone, I'm making the most out of the key system while it still lasts. So that's personally what I'm going for right now. Eventually, once we go into stamina, we'll have a different kind of thesis as to what we will try to aim for. I'm targeting military base right now for survival guides. You will need a ton of survival guides in order to upgrade your own survival guides to tier 10, to tier 9, whatever the max is at the time. You also need a ton of walkie-talkies, which you will find at the government building in order to get those parts in order to upgrade your walkie-talkies to max level. I'm running farm and residential just to get the axe as well as a money pouch from residential, so I, I do think there's value there. Uh, prison, I'm pretty much staying away from. I don't think there's a huge amount of value in prison except for the resources. So prison is one of the best places to get stuff like nails, which you do need for some of the upgrades that I've included in the list. But when it boils down to it, I love this update. The reason I love this update is because no matter where you go, you're pretty much going to need whatever that place is dropping. This game has so much need, so much materials that you need in order to upgrade, upgrade your items. So you know, wherever you decide to go is probably a good choice. It doesn't really matter as long as you're optimizing the amount of runs you're doing in a day. Again, I'm going to go ahead and prioritize those longer runs now. So when we do switch to a stamina system, I'll just go ahead and fill those in with shorter runs as well as I am targeting the forest for resources in order to upgrade my survival guides. I want to try to get as much income as possible because I know where camp is heading. Now, last but not least, this is probably one of the biggest parts about this game right now is we have the first in-game marketplace for our items used with our native token of camp. I can't tell you how massive this is. This does add the earn aspect to the game where you can then get the camp and sell it on Famous Fox Federation. We were talking about an LP, but honestly, I don't want an LP. LPs tend to drain uh, the funds from a project, and I would rather those funds be used towards hiring good developers. And in fact, holding on to the soul we needed for the LP has actually cucked our treasury a little bit. They USDC'd almost all the funds out so they can stabilize and budget for the next six plus months of funds that we need. And had we liquidated all that soul that we were holding on to, at 100 or more, we could have had much more runway to build out an even better game. Now, we have a ton of runway to go. I know exactly what the future plans hold for Remnants for Longwood Labs, and I will say that Remnants is the cornerstone to making everything possible. There will be a huge reason to hold Remnants that will be unveiled sometime in the future. Eventually, we'll talk about our exact plans once we kind of finalize them, but you're going to want camp. And to get the most amount of camp, you're going to want those items. And in order to upgrade those items, well, you're going to need those resources. On top of the fact that you're going to need resources for your actual land. So once we do the camp to land conversion, and if you haven't read the white paper, I'll go ahead and leave it down in the description below. But there are going to be pieces of land that correlate to how many camps you have. So there's going to be one for one, three, five, 10, 25, and 50 camps. So however many you burn for those is what kind of NFT you will get. And we can kind of pop over and check that out real quick. So if you haven't read this white paper, don't worry, I got you. I went over it here in this video above where we talk about the white paper and what's to come and why I am so bullish on remnants is the fact that it is the first in-game stable economy that we've seen on just about any game across any blockchain. One of the cool features that we are going to get is the remnants camps so you can search for that in magic eden or coral cube is go find our camp once you get those camps depending on how many you have is how many will translate into the land conversion so if you burn one well you only get a basic camp that's fine if you have three you get a settlement so you burn those three you get one settlement five is compound 10 is village 25 is town and 50 is city now these are going to generate the same amount as a remnant when it comes to camp. So the fact that they are two soul about less than remnants right now seems like a buy to me. In fact, I will be trying to get two town, so 25 camps in order to maximize the value I have. I'm not gonna to talk too much about the land piece until lands actually come out, but just know that I would go ahead and pick one up, pick three up, pick five up, 
10, 25, depending on how crazy you're feeling. But these are going to play a massive role in the game to follow. But this is where you're going to need a ton of resources. So we haven't really seen resource demand be too terribly high in order to get that in incremental increase in your item level. We will with the camps. So go ahead and start stacking those resources. That's also why I have resource runners, but I'm scaling more to the side of looting to getting income so I can actually buy stuff on the marketplace. Right now, it seems like buying on the marketplace for a lot of things makes a lot of sense, except for resources. Let's talk a little bit about making the most out of finding what you can on the market. You'll see that we have a bunch of tier one items right here, makeshift compass, damage walkie, all that good stuff. Uh, at three camp a piece. So if you are new to the game, if you have a completely blank remnant, don't worry, you can buy stuff very cheap. Uh, and you can actually DM me or comment on this video below if you actually need some help getting started with some basic items. I'm happy to help. Nonetheless, we see these tier one items. So let's talk about the compass. Uh, for instance, this is three camp right here. And then if we want to break it down for a piece, it's actually 50 camp to break down. So we're looking at a total cost of 53 camp. Now, if I go to parts and I look at compass needle, well, it's 54 camp. So it's really only a one camp spread, but that is an arbitrage opportunity at the time of recording this. You can see walkies are the same thing. So if we buy a walkie talkie six, you break it down, you get that battery. That's 56 camp, whereas a battery is only 55 camp right now. It would make more sense to buy a battery rather than a tier one walkie talkie. These are all little nuances that you need to keep an eye on in order to make sure that you are maximizing your market opportunity. So if you are trying to upgrade items and you're trying to decide what you want to upgrade first or what you should be buying in order to upgrade, if you need parts, look at these tier one items, make sure that you are identifying the cost of breaking it down versus just buying the part off the market. In this case, it would make more sense to go ahead and buy a makeshift compass and break it down. Whereas the walkie talkie is actually more expensive when you factor in the breakdown costs versus just buying the part off the market itself. The reason I'm not really buying resources unless I absolutely have to, unless I really just want to go ahead and upgrade an item is because of the opportunity costs. So if we see over here in the loot table for farm, for instance, you get four to 12 camp tokens and then maybe a possibility of an item, right? So keep that four to 12 number in mind, because if we go to resources, you're getting at least four camo netting, six nails, eight rope, four tarpaulin, and four wood. If you add all of those up, just the minimum, we're now looking at 10, 18, 22, 26 pieces of resources. If we go over to the market right now and we go to resources, well, they're selling for a minimum of one camp each. So you're basically getting 26 camp worth of items and that's bare minimum if you go on resource runs versus going on a loot trip or items. Finally, let's talk about these two places up here. As we've already seen, we have the blacksmith. You can break down items, you can craft items to higher tiers, but you can also buy keys. So if you do run out of keys at any time, it is 22 camp per key. Uh, nothing new to existing players. This has always been a thing. RIP locksmith. But you can see that 22 camp is actually pretty steep, especially if you're only going on like farm, you're actually losing a bit of camp in order for the hopes of getting one of the items. And some of the items have actually gone down quite a bit in camp value. So again, this is why I'm prioritizing camp uh, because as the market gets saturated and filled, I will have the liquidity to take advantage of any deals I see on the market. Over here we have banks. So this is where you'll get repossessed items. So if you haven't been managing your inventory properly and you loot something and you don't get it from the mailbox, well, it will eventually go into repossessed items. And this will be more of a thing once we actually have land, we have storage. And if you really aren't doing it, it's gonna be a penalty for not managing your inventory. Uh, you can also transfer camp. So this is how you actually bring it into your wallet and out of your wallet. So if you are trying to sell camp on Famous Fox or Solo Fox or any of our other marketplaces, this is how you do it to get it into your actual wallet. More importantly though, this is where storage is. So if we go to storage, you can see I have bought many slots, not as many as some people within remnants, but I bought a ton of slots to put a lot of my resources. That way I'm not clogging up my inventory on my actual remnants so I can continue to loot without the hassle and spend less time managing inventory. You'll notice that one thing you will find in abundance, especially if you have a metal detector, is going to be scrap metal. And you're going to need a ton of scrap metal, especially when it comes to owning a piece of land. So keep that in mind, keep a ton of it on you. Make sure you are getting your metal detectors because they will be incredibly valuable 
when the update comes out with land with companions and everything in between you can go ahead and purchase additional slots if you need them so if i want to purchase this it's 80 camp in order to get that slot these slots are on a sliding scale too so once i actually get to this slot over here i'll show you actually right here is when we get to 90. so 90 is now the new cost of buying slots and i am ocd so i'm just going to fill out this row now and that's that that's how you increase your bank inventory your bank storage so if you have a ton of stuff on you and you want it kind of mutually found between all remnants this is where i usually put it this is where i break down a lot of stuff finally we're going to get into some quick tips on some frustrations i've seen from the community one there's going to be a lot of confusion on breaking down right now breaking down especially if you have more than one rem or you're trying to break down multiple items you can only do one at a time so let's see i'm going to go ahead and break down this garden cart right here go ahead and hit break and you'll notice that when i go to break down another one i get this error message at the bottom where it says cannot break item while breakdown slot is full you can only break down one thing at a time right now which is pretty inconvenient pretty frustrating especially when you have more than one remnant now eventually the devs are going to change something but just know that you have to clear your mailbox slot when you're breaking something down at the current time of recording another little tidbit is that when you are actually upgrading your items make sure that the upgrade materials are in your remnant slot it won't let you upgrade unless they're in your slot so if i'm trying to upgrade into binoculars level two uh, i actually need the scrap metal the leather the glass the lenses and the one prior tier of the item in my inventory in order to craft the item so make sure if the materials are actually in your bag that they are going to be on your remnants when you're upgrading again just a really annoying nuance but we are pioneering the space guys it's not very easy to interact with the blockchain or anything like that uh, when you're doing these upgrades it's a little bit frustrating so i'm sure this dev team is absolutely cracked the team is growing at an exponential rate and they'll get on something to make our lives a little bit easier finally i want to talk a little bit about what is going on in the remnants and why there seems to be a lot of commotion almost uh, there was a huge part of the community that was asking when update when update but still diamond handing and when the update came out well it seemed like they were either in one of two camps if they're frustrated right one they were hoping the update would bring massive value so they can exit the game and just be value leeches is what i call them see if the update will bring them exit liquidity at a high price that didn't happen number two is frustration um whether it is just overwhelming amount of choices now or trying to manage everything seriously i i get it uh, just with 23 rems i cannot imagine what later nerd is feeling right now on trying to manage everything but just with 23 rems it is a lot to manage the inventory making sure i have inventory space from my resource runners making sure that I'm breaking down the right items making sure i'm keeping track of what to upgrade first it's mind-boggling at times so just take a deep breath understand there is definitely no wrong way to play this game that's the whole beauty of this and there's still so much more to go we're still getting pvp we're still getting companions we're still getting stamina we're still getting land there is a ton to come for this game on top of the fact that there is a secret project that stud and i are working on right now that will completely change the game for nft gaming I cannot stress enough that what we are planning right now is revolutionary and I think we are really the only game in the market right now that is positioned to do so. Ultimately just capping ourselves at 8,000 rems and fems and 4,000 camps that's not sustainable for player growth and I've, I've pretty much said this from the beginning which is why we are working on what we are working on. Once we're ready to reveal it to you guys I promise everything will just make sense. You guys will completely understand what Longwood Labs is trying to do and the vision we have for the future of NFT gaming. I think it's something that will completely cycle value back to remnant holders. So if you're selling your remnants now we're going to make sure you regret it here in six months a year however long it takes us to implement this. But we are planning for the future. We have the treasury in order to have the runway for the future. And your continued support is what makes this game great. The community is strong in this one, and we cannot thank you enough for staying around like myself, who just invest in and has been passionate about Remnants and loves where the game is headed. Seriously, have you ever seen any game that has an in-game marketplace that has off-chain transactions so you can make sure that you are still looting when Solana is down? Although the recent Solana update has been very nice and maybe we eventually go back to on-chain gaming. 
who knows it really depends on the quality of network but we do have that option to toggle it on and off with LAN will come a whole slew of new opportunities with resources and what you can do with your camp and the team will continuously add quality of life changes to make this more seamless and we'll make sure it doesn't feel so much like a chore as it is fun to play this game we want to focus more on the play aspect of it than the earn aspect of it because players when there is true demand to play this game will find a way to earn because you own your assets. And that's the beauty of NFT gaming. That's the beauty of play and earn games and the two future options that we will have in our next iteration, our next project. So if you stayed tuned for all of this, thank you so much for tuning in for the alpha. I cannot stress enough that what we are working on is, is truly revolutionary in the NFT gaming space. We are thrilled to be where we are at after six months of having a longevity, having people continuously playing at the time of recording their 7,000 out of 8,000 remnants looting constantly and people remaining engaged in the community, whether it's on Twitter, whether it's on Discord, whether it's asking the right questions. If you have any questions, feel free to catch my streams. 10 a.m. on Thursdays, Eastern Standard Time, and then 9 p.m. on Tuesdays, Eastern Standard Time. If you can't make one of those streams for some reason, whether you have work or it's outside your time zone, let me know. My Twitter is always open, at Bison Trades. You can always ask me questions on there, as well as catch me in the Remnants Discord, where I am always open to helping out the community. This was obviously a very long guide. I thank you so much for watching all of it. There's a ton involved in this game, and I'm so excited for the future to see where it ends up. I'll see you on the next video.